everyone, a very warm welcome to today's virtual session. I'm Ramya from People Matters and I will be your host for the day. As we all know, in today's competitive job market, the hunt for top-notch talent with niche skill sets is challenging. Businesses can no longer afford to stick to traditional hiring practices if they want to attract high-impact professionals. Most importantly, companies must cast a wider net and explore untapped potential of new age workforce across India beyond tier one cities. Continuing with this endeavor to provide actionable insights to our community, People Matters in partnership with TAG is excited about this exclusive session, which explores the power of untapped potential, expanding talent pools for high impact hiring. Before I introduce our speakers, I would like to introduce you to TAG, a digital recruitment platform. It has successfully provided ready to hire talent to over 100 clients in more than 14 sectors by combining the power of human knowledge and data with the vision to fulfill 1 million jobs through their talent platform by 2025. TAG strives to connect people with people, companies and opportunities. Now, I would like to welcome our panelists. Today, we have with us Sanjeev Kapoor, VP, Global Head of Talent Acquisition, NTT Data Services. With over 20 years of experience, he is an accomplished HR leader who excels at leading diverse teams across global locations, contributing immensely to the company's triumphant journey. Thank you so much for joining us, Sanjeev. Next up is Sailesh A. Menezes, Vice President and Head of Human Resources, Hewlett Packard Enterprise India. Sailesh has portrayed multiple roles in his career with Hewlett Packard, Hewlett Packard Enterprises, including HR leader for sales, engineering, R&D, services, and software. He has been at the forefront responsible for the execution of people strategy, engagement and development, employee relations, and great talent management. Welcome to this session, Chalesh. Thanks, Romeo, for having me. Glad to be here. Thank you. Now we would like to welcome Shefali Suri, Group CHRO, Reeves Cotton. With core excellence and expertise in HR, Shefali has been efficiently managing HR for Reeves Cotton Limited. During her tenure, she has been executing HR strategies aligned with the business plan and strategic direction of the company. Thank you so much for joining us today, Shifali. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Thank you. Now we would like to welcome our moderator, Devashish Sharma, founding member and CEO, Tagged. With over 28 years of experience managing the functioning of business process outsourcing, he has been a strong advocate of using tech and data for decision making in HR. In the recent past, he has been instrumental in driving growth while ensuring that TAG remains a prominent center of excellence in the field of recruitment. Thank you so much for joining us today, Devishish. Thank you, Ramya, and thank you to People Matters. Before and, we begin, uh, a quick note to our editor. Thank you. Just uh, before we begin, a quick note to our attendees today. If you have any questions during the session, please feel free to use the chat window. We would bring them up towards the end of the session, which is reserved for audience Q&A. So keep posting questions for our speakers. Over to you, Devashish, to begin the conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ramya. And uh, I welcome our speakers, uh, Sanjeev, Sailesh, and Shefali. Thank you so much for joining. It's going to be a very interesting session because I think the timing is perfect. Uh, last year, 2022, the H1, we all knew we were um, facing a meltdown where everyone was hiring. It was uh, a, a mammoth hiring across all sectors, especially IT tech was completely booming. I know firsthand that a lot of organizations uh, hired a lot of bench. Then, of course, uh, the geopolitical situation starting H2 last year had a lot of significant impact. And we saw that a lot of the hiring sentiment early this year uh, did get muted uh, and uh, was subdued. But we are again seeing, especially in H2, uh, hiring sentiment tremendously picking up. 
And I think uh, this conversation that I'm ha having with all three of you amazing leaders who are at the center, not only of your organizations, people agenda, but uh, within your industries too, um, uh, it is the perfect time for us to discuss uh, how we can prepare ourselves uh, for this onslaught that might come now in the next year or so, within the next year. And that comes to our topic, uh, expanding talent pools for high impact hiring. High impact hiring, of course, our businesses uh, would want us to do that um, 10 days earlier than even they thought of, right? Uh, so coming to that, um, I'll start with Shefali first, Shefali. Uh, and this, of course, will go to uh, all three of our panelists. First question, what do you think are your top three uh, hiring challenges today? And you could speak with your, not only for your for, for G, GCL, but also for your industry. Let me do this first. <laughs> I think the industry, um, the industry, especially the industry that I'm in right now, uh, it's getting into an unprecedented disruption. And, um, you know, what we thought as a typical automotive sector or any sector for that matter, yeah. has the entire picture has completely changed. Today we're talking about a different customer preference. We're talking about extremely different and changing technology. Uh, our competitors have changed. Um, therefore, the skill gap that has arisen is fairly large. And to be able to, you know, dynamically move that forward and match the skill set gap, uh, I think that is the biggest challenge that we have. And um, let me tell you, um, I'm a firm believer that, uh, you know, an organization needs to build talent within. You know, you can't always be looking outside. And it's important people see the growth happening. So investing in that talent, making sure that people feel motivated, and at the same time, you know, being able to manage the business needs, I think that has become a very large challenge. Fantastic, Shifali. So I, I, uh, what I penned down from what you said, I think uh, with uh, a lot of new roles emerging, uh, we also had discussion electric vehicle and internet of things and so many other uh, new skills emerging. Uh, the entire competitive landscape uh, within the industry is significantly changing and there's a big skill demand gap just because of that. Yeah. And uh, you've spoken of balancing uh, uh, owing talent from within and external hiring. That's what I heard, right? That's right. Perfect, perfect. Uh, Selish, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, you all do such a phenomenal job um, in uh, the way the brand amplifies itself and so many other things. But I know that you are the center of a lot of challenges that you face. So what are your top three uh, biggest ones? Sure. Yeah. Firstly, uh, Devish, thank you for having me um, on this call today and giving me an opportunity to share a few thoughts. Thank you, People Matters, as well. Uh, I mean, the top two or three would predominantly be down to one, the availability of good talent. Uh, Shafali did speak a little bit about the skill gap. I truly believe that we are um, today struggling with the demand versus supply gap. It's widening as we speak. It's causing significant wage inflation, scarcity of talent, and especially around key skills like data sciences, AI, ML, IoT, you spoke about the internet of things, uh, network security, cloud infrastructure, system software, you name it, there is a gap that's continuing to expand uh, between supply and demand. And that is continuing to be a very, very significant uh, challenge. That's that's one. Sure, the second sure. is about how do we, how do organizations create a compelling value proposition, an employee value pro proposition or EVP uh, that excites all demographic groups? Mm -hmm. We have a number of generations at a workplace. You have uh, Gen X, Gen Y, Gen Z. In the next uh, few years, you'll have Generation Alpha will be entering the workplace there. You know, and each one has a very different reason to be interested yeah. in you as, an, as, a, as a company, as an employer. And how do you create that differentiated EVP that really in, interests each one and attracts them to you? Mm -hmm. That's the second. And the third, as I've been thinking through this, what gives me a few sleepless nights is about how do we ensure as we use a lot more technology and uh, you know, we use AI, we use ML in our 
uh, in our processes, how do we know that we do not inadvertently discriminate against diversity groups? How do we ensure that we have a fair, equitable recruitment process when you use technology and the tools that you use do not differentiate uh, you know, in, in the way they're programmed? So these were some of the top challenges I would probably consider as what's plaguing not just uh, the organization I'm part of, but also the industry as a whole. Thank you, Sailesh. And uh, I think uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, you did, of course, allude to what uh, uh, Shefali had said on the skill gap and so much that needs to be done with all these new roles that you mentioned uh, that are emerging. How do we make sure that we get that right fit talent uh, before time, if not at the right time? Uh, second, what you mentioned was uh, a very compelling, uh, very interestingly unique employer value proposition, especially with organizations as large as HPE, I can talk for GCL and NTT data too, um, they span geographies, but uh, they span other paradigms, including generations. I, I know firsthand that you have multiple generations working, and how does that uniquely fit into all of these um, uh, you know, how is the how is it unique to that particular span of talent? Uh, and lastly, of course, how does the advancement in technology make sure there's no bias uh, to there's no prejudice towards diversity? Can it be inclusive enough? So these are the three amazing points that I heard from you. Thank you, thank you so much, Salish. Sanjeev, over to you. You lead the people agenda for a very big Japanese. Uh, a giant which is so Indian in its last mile today. Uh, so your top three challenges. Sure. Thank you, Devashish, for having me here. Uh, it's such a proud moment for me to uh, rubbing shoulders with Selesh and Shefali, uh, you know, on the same platform. And thanks to People Matters as well. It's indeed a pleasure to be here. Uh, I think uh, I will touch upon exactly, you know, I, I was just re-looking at my list of top three challenges, right? I was just kind of, you know, putting in my head when you Put that question out and i was just trying to say oh shefali has already done that salesh is also doing yeah. that so the challenges are very much common right uh, and agnostic of the industry right where salesh yeah. is into that manufacturing product-based uh, enterprise and service-based enterprise to an extent and shefali comes from an industry which is purely manufacturing right and to ntd data we are a hardcore services organization right the challenges almost uh, are agnostic of the industry today right Right. Um, how do we leverage technology? And I pick up, uh, you know, a cue from what Salesh left on with. How do you leverage technology, right? With AI all around you, right? You're talking about Bard. You're talking about ChatGPT. You're talking about so many things. And in our industry, when you are going hybrid, when you're hiring remote for the last three years, how do you leverage technology? And yet look at some very specific, uh, you know, uh, problems or issues that our recruitment teams face across the globe today is how do you weed out fake candidates, right, with, with, with this whole idea of, uh, you know, interviewing and assessing people, how do you weed them out, it could be 1%, it could be 5%, it could be 10%, again, every organization would have some kind of a demon to work with, right, but how do you weed that out. And you can't do that by calling everybody back to the office, what used to be three years back, the norm, right? You would have your uh, daily drives, weekend drives, whatever you call it. I know Shafali and Saleh should agree to that extent wherein we don't have candidates coming in, uh, you know, truck loads and bus loads, <laughs> especially now. But how do you leverage technology? And yet the second point was how do you... Um, weed out again the unconscious biases that creep in through the ai slash ml uh, construct of uh, leveraging technology see technology is an enabler of course we all know that but i think we are still far away from uh, you know weeding out our biases right wherein uh, our high impact groups uh, be it diversity of any kind be it uh, you know an lgbtq uh, person or a person with disability or uh, you know the gender biases that we have so how do you take care of that because it has to be on merit purely right so these are some of the key challenges i feel 
But I am also sure within the IT services industry as a whole, it's a huge trillion dollar industry right now. I think that's what we are all gunning towards is uh, the no-shows, right? Mm -hmm. uh, because that really takes off 20 to 25% of your effort and it goes down the drain. Uh, and and it's a larger issue because it's got a lot to do with um, you know the character the the culture uh, that we are all in right it's the social thread that we are in and uh, we have not seen improvements in that wherein people will disregard the offer and say um, I don't join I don't join I don't care right so that commitment from the resources is also equally important right so I, I wanted to bring another perspective on the challenges here and hence i think uh, a 20 25 percent no show right on an average right it could be five percent in some organizations or lower than that also but uh that's a big problem because there's a big effort right from five candidates that you source to uh, offer one candidate and then the person drops off and you got nowhere to go because you had somebody to start today and the person is you know ghosted you so what do you do with that so that's yeah. that's 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 a huge challenge uh, and i think that's something that we might want to you know uh, work upon everybody's done something on that so yeah, but during absolutely. the webinar we can we can talk about it yeah <laughs> right right fantastic sanjeev so very quickly of course you spoke about uh, technology of course being uh, the backbone uh, a very big essential in bringing uh, everything together but how does the technology ensure that, uh, firstly, all the challenges that would come through technology, that weeding out that you spoke about of talent, which perhaps could be incorrect, how could that be sacrosanct, right? Second Correct. thing you said, uh, how, do we, how do we balance technology versus the commitment of the candidate to join, finally, right? Uh, there, we spoke about no show. So absolutely made a yeah. note of that. And then, of sure. course, uh, with that, I'll come to my second question. And uh, I, I take it on with uh, Selish first. Selish, uh, to your mind, what has been your, as the leader, people leader of HPE in India, uh, what has been your mantra? One, one thing, and you could be anecdotal, uh, in how you were able to uh, pick out any one of the challenges that you mentioned and how were you able to solve it? Okay. Um, so maybe I can speak a little bit about the first challenge is about the availability of talent. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you know, in India today, given the kind of investments organizations are making in India, uh, there's no better, firstly, there's no better place to be an employee than in India today. And I think that's acknowledged by everyone because the job opportunities are immense, irrespective of the industry you're in. There's hardly an industry that's not doing well uh, there can be, you know, um, spikes and troughs, as we always know, uh, but I think that's fine. And I think one thing that I wanted to share about was about what are we doing to address this this gap in talent availability? And how do we also take some of our uh, endeavors to maybe beyond the tier one city? You know, so the first thing that we looked at doing was, of course, uh, drive up a lot of traction around the university highway. We have increased it from 24% to 30%. Uh, mm -hmm. We are very selective, yes, but we also visit multiple colleges across the country, uh, partner and forge relationships with universities, technical institutions, um, ways by which we can enhance um, you know, the pool. The second is we've also looked at how do we, uh, I wouldn't say eliminate, but probably create more flexibility around education and experiences. Um, as job description, because sometimes if you're too fixed on a particular experience, a particular education, you may tend to focus too much on the skill and not the person. Mm. So while skill is important, and we will continue to hire for the right skill, we also look to understand how do we hire talent that has the competence, has the right attitude, has the ability to do well, because we mm. truly think skill can always be trained. So while doing that, you expand your talent pool straight away. We also looked at, um, you know, looking at a career reboot for those who have taken a break and would like to come back. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's a huge, um, you know, availability of talent that really exists today. 
you know, uh, the hybrid workforce or the work hybrid workplace has opened up opportunity where employers can be more flexible. You know, so while every employer expects a certain percentage of time back at the workplace, but the kind of flexibility we're seeing today, India as an industry or as a country has really not seen this any time pandemic. So that weekend over there that uh, that we we have also looked at leveraging a uh, whole employee referral programs because we truly believe that to me is the single most important uh, aspect of getting talent, uh, the right talent at the right time, because, um, you know, who better than your own brand ambassadors to go out and source talent for you. You know, so I can go on and on and on, but just these are few that come to mind in terms of how we expanding our talent pools. How are we expanding beyond tier one cities into tier two, tier three cities? And at the end, how do we actually work through some of the challenges? I'll just stay with one because I'm sure I'll be speaking yeah. um, through a lot of the points that Shafani and Sanjeev would also speak. So I'll stop here and let us hear from the others as well. Fantastic. Zanesh, I know firsthand, of course, Tag knows firsthand how amazingly um, uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, especially, you know, uh, your returning population who want to get re-employed with HP and they even, you know, returning moms who've taken a hiatus and, and you carving out specific roles to make sure they have that runway. So ama amazing work done there. Uh, Shafali, I'll come to you. You spoke uh, about the balancing act of growing talent from within versus being, especially even at a mid and senior level. How do you do, how are you able to balance that? Because when business comes to us, that mandate is get it to me now. And more often than not, because business gets so caught in their crunches of where they are, they're not able to see uh, even nearsightedly on what possibly could be available. And so how, how does GCL and how do you solve this? You know, uh, I won't say that we have solved it because it's a, it's a long journey. And uh, yeah. in fact, uh, you know, Devashish, the, the solutions which used to work before, uh, you know, don't work any longer. You need to think with a very different hat. Yeah. Um, you know, you need to think out of the box. I mean, today we're talking about, uh, you know, suddenly you'll have somebody come and say, hey, you know, I, I've decided I want to go and see the world. You know, <laughs> this is for me now. And, you know, that kind of um, fluidity, that kind of, um, you never thought initially, you know, when we started our careers, it was always work, work, work. Uh, today's generation is different. The kind of workforce that we are having is very different. They have very different life priorities. Mm -hmm. And I think um, uh, we as an organization totally respect that. And uh, we want people to flourish mentally and uh, also in their jobs. Now, when it comes to, um, you know, how do we build that, uh, solve this problem? Um, uh, we, we've got, we don't have a workforce which is absolutely you know, homogeneous in nature. Each has a different skill set requirement. And um, I think we're going bottom up and we're looking at even our bargainable staff. We've started a program recently called this Chalo Aage Bade, wherein we are trying to uh, you know, uh, build skills, all the managerial basic skills. We're talking about technical skills, functional skills on how a corporate works. Mm -hmm. We identify uh, some people who are high potentials, we train them, and we are bringing them into the executive rooms. And wow. this to us has become very successful because people are now looking at looking at us with, okay, I can make my career here, you know, I can learn, I'm not stuck at one, one level, you know, there is a way to go. So I think uh, we've done these small things and uh, that that's really worked for us, but I think overall, uh, trust building is so important in the organization now. And uh, as HR, I think it's really a big, a big, very big priority for us. Perfect. Um, amazing. And the program you said was Chalo Aage Tak? Chalo Aage Bade. Aage Bade. Amazing, amazing. Uh, and, and of course, uh, while this would address a lot of the uh, landscape within the organization, does this also focus on uh, uh, gender diversity for women especially? Yes, shop floor, including shop floor? Yes, yes. Because yeah. I've been asked that question several times, especially in manufacturing, that how should how do we crack that bastion of allow, getting women? Because China's done it amazingly well. 70% of their uh, factories, even where a lot of physical strength is required, are women. 
uh, so, why did uh, India do it? So Devishish, um, uh, uh, surprisingly for us as well, in our Reeves Electric Mobility uh, Factory, yeah. seventy percent of the workforce are all women. Wow. Right uh, in the core engineering in uh, Reeves, um, we have a smaller number, but we're working towards it. Mm. And uh, I think each time there is a change, it calls for more um, efforts from us, and we try to build that diversity. Wow. More amazing. So I think Chalo Aage Bade is going to be one more conversation that you and I are going to have soon. <laughs> amazing. Great to hear that. Uh, Sanjeev, uh, you, you spoke about uh, commitment, right? Uh, you spoke about commitment of talent outside the organization, especially once they've had a conversation, committed to an offer. Um, um, well, how do you see this changing um, anything that entity data, and of course, there's a big thing about the employer brand itself. Yours is an amazing employer brand. Um, while you would have that leverage of, you know, people wanting to opt for that, there are so many other organizations who, especially small, medium enterprises, who don't have that leverage. Uh, and they, startups especially, struggle for survival. So how do you right. do that balancing act? Is there any intervention that you've done to be able to solve uh, this commitment that external candidates would have to finally come and show up in the role that they committed? Yes, and I think the last couple of years has been an asset as to what our philosophy and how do we actually use this as part of our core workflows, right, mm -hmm. uh, is. And it has been so, uh, you know, um, proud moment for us to see how we've been able to retain our uh, strengths and leverage, uh, you know, the brand. Uh, you spoke about it, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, to make sure that we are still at a very healthy offer to join ratio. That's one of the KPIs that the recruitment mm -hmm. teams work with, right? Yeah. In spite of what has been happening in the industry, it was a volcanic moment, right? In the last few years, or at yeah. least eight, eight quarters, I can easily say it was, it was really uh, bad. Uh, we held on to our, uh, you know, fundamentals. We said we will continue to grow and we will offer and I'm taking, uh, you know, what Salesh mentioned, the EVP. I think that's very important. If you if you walk the talk, right, that, that makes a big difference. A few examples, maybe yeah. uh, anecdotal, <laughs> if you may. Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> for us, the principle is we do not just, it's not a one-way street, right? That means I am not finding the right candidate only that's not the only job that my recruitment team is uh, you know geared up for we are also trying to desell the job right and what does that mean is that is this job right for the candidate or not that's more important for us for the longevity it's not always money and trust me i can let you know that when people were offering 200 percent on the current compensation in the last two years we were still working in the way that we, we used to offer, uh, you know, a good compensation, a healthy compensation, mm. nothing to do with the existing uh, pay, right? And mm. we would give what is the right pay for the right job, right? Mm. We, we still continue to do that. And we did mm. not see the turmoil that some of our, uh, you yeah. know, uh, uh, organizations in our industry. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, and, and this is important because, we would we would be happy to let a person know that while you're the right fit for the job but this job would require you to do a b c these are the growth patterns we see in a role like this um where all can you apply within the organization after a few years when would you try and maybe when would you hit a glass ceiling or something in this role it's important to be honest from day one Right. And my recruitment team is doing a fantastic job by having a conversation. So for us, mm -hmm. it is the true talent acquisition. We are not yeah. just doing recruitment, right? Because yeah. you need to understand what works for the candidate also, not just what works for your hiring manager. Well, and I always tell them that you're not you're not HR. There's nothing HR in it. The mantra that my team works with is that we are all sales guys. Yeah. Right. 
I'm I'm either selling a job to a candidate or I'm selling a candidate to the hiring manager. That's what I'm doing, and rest of it is all administrative task. So do the best in all the fields that you are in, right? So you get the right job for the right candidate, and and get the right candidate to the hiring manager. So that's that's Amazing. helped us a lot. Yeah, 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 Sanjeev, and I couldn't agree more. I think uh, a lot of the tall leaders that I have spoken with. Uh, uh, they have been able to address. Uh, I think candidates also have realized that uh, one, when an organization talks career path, think they speak about uh, uh, how they would be able to grow, and and not only just compensation. I think they also, especially in the last uh, year or so, when the bubble burst, uh, stability has become a very big factor. So organizations that are able to offer a stable, um, you know, life ahead, a work life ahead for everyone. I think that has become very attractive, even in the IT tech industry. So thank you, Sanjeev. And I just uh, have a yeah. add on to that. So what we yeah. do is if, if there is a, there is a role which doesn't require me to invest more than maybe 18 months or 24 months, right? Not just because of the contract that I have with my clients, but I know for a fact that this role is, is a temporary role. I would hire a temp rather than a permanent resource there because that's the commitment that we want to make. We want to be sure that, you know, someone is investing for those 24 months in my organization, not beyond that. There could be opportunities beyond 24 months, but I'm not committing beyond 24 months. Very interesting. And there's a huge gig population who wants to work just like that today. Absolutely. Right? <laughs> Coming to you, Selish. And uh, we, we spoke about, I think, uh, HPE has one of the most amazing, uh, and you, you uh, spoke about it, you know, India calls it campus, but HP calls it university hiring. And it cuts across all your different business segments within India. And you do a terrific job. You go to, um, you've even gone to tier two cities, um, colleges, and you've been able to carve out talent. Um, could you just give us some examples on how you were able to do that? Sure, sure. I'll be happy to do so, Devishish. Um, yes, as I mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago, um, about 30% of our talent um, comes in from colleges, grad hires, university hiring. Um, and to me, that's a phenomenal source of talent that we can leverage on. Um, you know, for various reasons. One is, um, you know, talent that's easily uh, trainable, the right attitude, the right uh, competencies to do well, the the aspiration to do well there. I think the first thing that you need to do, which we understood early in this whole game, is that you need to have a very potent, uh, defined campus strategy. Mm. You, know, you need to understand uh, which campus suits your needs. It's not just about visiting campuses randomly. Uh, you will never get to where you want to be if you do that. You cannot spray yourself to thin all across uh, India and expect you to, to get return. You know, so that's one. Secondly, as I always speak about, I love speaking about uh, employee value proposition. If you're visiting campuses, um, every grad hire has aspiration. Show them the career path, make them understand how they can contribute to the organization. If you cannot engage with them effectively, they will not see you as an employer of choice. Mm. Uh, third is leverage the power of social media. Um, old campus hires to the Gen Z. Um, they have lived through, you know, uh, through the whole era of social media. Um, employer branding is so important. You really need to drive your branding through the power of social media. Connect with them through channels they're most familiar with. Uh, you know, we we speak about. I have a son, and uh, you know, he's still in his teens, so uh, long before he gets to college, but. When you look at uh, all of them, they do connect through the power of videos, 40 second wheels. Uh, learn to connect with them using the right uh, social media strategies there. Create, I always believe we should create campus ambassadors because yeah. students love listening to success stories of those yeah. who you know, have actually graduated, joined organization and come back and you know, that connect that you have. Create that connect there. I also believe that you need to change uh, your selection processes. 
those all archaic selection processes do not speak great about the organization that you are. Look at more contemporary selection processes because that itself is a brand. You know, they've gone away from the earlier selection processes that we've actually been using. Um, I also truly believe um, that the, your whole relationship with colleges should be symbiotic, should be much more than just hiring. It should be about with schools, with colleges, universities, to develop talent for the future. And that's when you'll be able to create your brand on that. Uh, Absolutely. And, and I know firsthand, uh, Salesh, because exactly this, I think, because this is a program you've run for so many years, you've been yeah. able to go back in a second year, back to the institution, telling, recommending what would be the changes required uh, in their curriculum for, you know, talent to be more relevant to the latest uh, changes in the job roles. Yes. Uh, you know, I always say, um, you should not, Organizations should not become become training centers for fresh fresh grad. That's what's happening today. Yeah. Uh, we need to enable the colleges, the schools, yeah. the universities to train talent ready for the workplace. And that when that symbiotic relationship that you create really starts to add on. So as I said, we need to have a strong strategy. It needs to cover all the points you spoke about. But at the end of it, it's about how do you engage with them? How do you show? Uh, a career path and how do you clearly define the role each campus grad will play that will make an impact to the organization's strategy and vision. Uh, because today, talent today wants to see that. It's not just about throwing money. Um, you will not get very far with just that. It's about a more holistic approach. Yeah, so what I hear is uh, get to the future talent and create the employer brand right there by making uh, the the their future most relevant to them. Thank you, thank you, Salesh. And I come to my next question first to Shafali, then to Sanjeev, of course. Uh, we are now talking about, and of course, Shalish uh, alluded to it, the employer value proposition and social media is today right at the center. And uh, uh, Shafali, I have, uh, I remember this uh, article published within People Matters that was posted on social media written by you. Uh, in fact, it was People Matters who interviewed you on uh, in, environmental social governance, ESG, and the amount of following that article itself had, so the power of social media to attract new talent. Uh, what what would you Absolutely. want? To uh, yeah. I think, um, I think uh, Devashish, uh, uh, power of social media and employer branding is so important today. Uh, you know, one realizes is the one when we went to COVID and there was no you know, people were not meeting each other. There was no, there was no word of mouth, right? And what was working was um, the employer branding part of it. Now, um, specifically to Breeds Cotton, um, Breeds Cotton, if you look at the journey, we moved from hardcore manufacturing, while that still stays with us, but yes. we've also evolved into technology as we have Breeds Technologies, we have Breeds Financial Leasing, mm -hmm. uh, and we have Breeds Electric Mobility, mm -hmm. apart from Breeds Engineering. Now, the entire diversity which has taken place in this group is phenomenal. Uh, the uh, what people think or envision of uh, Reeves Cotton in the uh, so far was oh, it's engineering company. There was no um, understanding of we also do technologies, we also do financial leasing, we're also into electric uh, mobility space. So this um, uh, employer branding really, really helped us. Today, Reeves Cotton has a significant uh, uh, footprint on the social media. Uh, yeah. There is a lot of uh, queries that we get about, uh, oh, so what does Greaves Cotton do, really? Mm -hmm. And, you know, there is this thing that I keep telling to each and every. I'm not from the manufacturing industry. I come from uh, the financial services industry. But uh, uh, let me tell you the kind of flexibility that I get, the kind of, uh, you know, you have a position in that in HR has a face, HR has the uh, respect and a strategic, it is a strategic advisor. Yeah. Uh, and that is something which really excites me and the people in my team. So uh, I think overall, employer branding has been a very big uh, thing for uh, Reeves Cotton. Oh, amazing, amazing, Shivali. And I, uh, I vouch for that because with the way GCL has diversified itself from uh, 
what it continues to do amazingly well, but the way and how talent externally could needs to see all of those uh, diverse aspects of business. Uh, it is amazingly managed by you. So congratulations for that. But Sanjeev, coming to you, um, uh, you know, Japanese precision, process excellence, entity data is known for that. And that uh, not only for India, but across the world, entity data uses as a cornerstone to attract talent. Uh, so what do you have to say about that? Yes, you're right. And I'll just give an example, of, uh, you know, yeah. like in North America, especially in the United States, uh, yeah. NTD sponsors the uh, a very high powered, uh, you know, high rush uh, sport, which is the mm -hmm. IndyCar, right? So mm -hmm. NTD is, uh, you know, the primary sponsor for IndyCar in US. And that shows, uh, you know, clearly what we are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's a high performance that we mm -hmm. want to portray there, right? So when you talk about branding, yes. Yeah. Uh, when you see your own cars there and when you see the whole event being sponsored by NTT, it's a big thing, right? It's an annual event and it's, 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 it's a wonderful way to showcase uh, some of our key values, right, that we subscribe to and as i said earlier we walk the talk that's that's a clear-cut way of you know putting our brand right ahead where it matters not only to high, our clients but to the high customer. performance high performance precision and perfection. teamwork yeah and teamwork okay. right because yeah, and teamwork. Energy, Absolutely. i mean if you look at those pit stops uh -huh. and that's an example i always portray when i'm with my teams to say you should always be, you know, take some experience from the pit stop. Look at how every individual in that pit stop works when a car comes mm -hmm. in for fuel or change of the tires. That clearly shows that it's in synchronization. That's the harmony that works, right? And I think right. that's that's very key for us. It's it's a people right. industry we are in. <laughs> right, 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 Sanjeev. Perfect. I mean, that's such an amazing story. Um, yeah. we'll, we'll certainly talk about it. Uh, <laughs> sure. I want to know more on how you do that. Um, coming to, you know, our central point of uh, um, people who leave us and leave our organizations and go, can they be ambassadors? Uh, I know HP does it brilliantly. Uh, GCL has a very big legacy. Um, to all three of you, uh, how have you been able to leverage alumni networks uh, to get in more talent? Of course, uh, Selish, you spoke about uh, talent returning into the fold, but uh, talent which has moved away, uh, how do you make sure they remain excited and connected to the employer brand so that they can also be ambassadors to bring in talent? Uh, so first, very quickly, Salish, we are running out of time. So in the next, we'll wrap up in five minutes and then take audience questions. So yeah. you, Salish, first, Shafali, followed by you, Sanjeev. So I'll be very quick because we love to have some questions from the audience as well. Yeah. Um, First, you need to understand why do you need uh, to engage with your alumni. One is they are probably your best brand ambassador, provided you've treated them well. And I'm assuming that every organization is intended to treat their, um, you know, their employees and ex-employees very really well. Uh, the second is to rehire them at some point of time if we believe that there is a match and a mutual decision um, that exists. Now, to answer the first point, you need to understand how do you engage with them and keep that relationship going. You know, so we use be it um, you know newsletters, uh, alumni events, um, you know career development programs or networking events for them, um, even discounts on certain products, uh, which which gets them really excited about um, you know about being part of that organization because when they're excited about it, even though they may not be your current employees they would speak about it and that goes a very long way but on the other hand as you know hp does attract a lot of talent back to the workplace once they've visited us and i think that's that goes down to culture and it's all about how do you how do they feel when they were part of the organization but just one caveat here and i'll stop with that when you want to rehire a person who's left the organization try to understand whether you've been able to fix the reason that they have left you in the first place yeah. If you do not fix that, then you will, you're only setting it up for a failure. Yeah. Go back, understand if there was an issue, has it been fixed? How do we fix it? And then welcome them back. So 
So I'll leave it here. I just want to be very brief because we're running out of time. Um, Absolutely, Salesh. Yeah. 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 Making, making sure that you're able to fix uh, the reason why the person left in the first place, to, especially if they've been amazing talent in the past. Uh, Shifali. Yeah. No, I think uh, I so, so agree with what Salesh has uh, mentioned. And uh, that's something that we also engage in. We have a lot of networking that we continue to do. Um, in fact, over the last two years, we've had a lot of talent which wants to move back to Green's Bottom. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is across the group. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them also want to get into, oh, you have opened, this is the new uh, you know, business that you have. And hey, yeah. I can get into this. There is also a lot of people um, networking and word of mouth where people are talking to different people in different industries that, you know, we just Word of mouth, huge. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes, that, that totally happens. But um, I totally agree with what Selish mentioned that, you know, you need to fix those reasons. And uh, in a formal interview, you normally get the exit interview, you get a reason as growth prospects. I mean, that's something I don't understand what that means. But... Um, uh, when you get deeper into it and you sort of figure out the actual reasons, I think if one can fix that, uh, that is when this really uh, becomes very successful. Yeah. Amazing, amazing, Shifali. Sanjeev? Yeah, so uh, uh, I, I would just say that exactly what Salesh had, but yeah, we don't have products that we can offer at a discount to our ex-employees. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but uh, we have a couple of things. One, you will be surprised to know that we have to somewhere or the other at times control our employee referral, right? Because we have gone all the way up to 60, 65%, right, of, uh, you know, uh, the contribution from employee referral and more often than not the employee referrals are mostly the uh, folks who want to come back right so they would have someone uh, as a colleague in the organization and they say hey do you have a role open for me now and mm -hmm. i tell you what employee referral has never been a way for employees to earn money right extra mm -hmm. incentive because that's mm -hmm. highly incentivized programs mm -hmm. right i have in my own experience stopped complete incentives However, the employee referral has not come down, mm -hmm. right? So people don't refer because of money. They mm -hmm. refer because they are happy with the culture yeah. of the organization and they want their friend and ex-colleague or whoever they, you call it, right, to come and enjoy and reap the benefits also, right? So that's that's very important for us when we talk about this. And you'll be surprised, as I said earlier, we've had to manage our employee referral to say, okay, now let's do first in, first out in terms of applications, enough of referrals now, right? And it's not that we don't want to pay for incentives, but we want to leverage all other channels of our recruitment equally better than, you know, just incentives. So we're doing that. But apart from that, we now have a um, alumni portal, which is available. Uh, and we are already, you know, we've already sent invites to all our ex-employees to register on that portal. Uh, if they have any uh, employee, ex-employee, you know, assistance that they need on some kind of a documentation or provident fund or some of those retirals, they can mm -hmm. always reach out to us. And what we are also doing is anything that we do, anything that's on, say, LinkedIn for NTD data, anything that we are, uh, you know, telling people that this is what we're doing now, is also going on our alumni portal, right? So uh, anybody who's registered on the portal would also get to know the news about the organization, where have we moved, what are the different things we are doing. For example, Amazing. we now have a career 2.0, which is not just for women, but for anybody who wants to come and, you know, have taken a sabbatical or anything and wants to rejoin the organization. So these are some of the key things that we are doing. Part-time workers, in the last three years, mm -hmm. we have uh, leveraged our part-time workers to an extent wherein be it a man or a woman or anything, right? I mean, and that's, uh, we have no preferences there, right? So anybody can come and get into a part-time option, right? So, yeah. Amazing. We'll Sajid, thank you. Sajid, thank you. And uh, we just have a little over 10 minutes left. I'll be taking up three questions to each one of you. The first one, Sanjeev, uh, is actually my last question, and I'm coupling it up with the, uh, the fifth question that the audience uh, has posed. With the increased focus on identifying talent pool well in advance, how is the industry maturing to the proactive to proactive hiring demand prediction process? Mantras for the TA team to adopt proactive hiring approach. And my question um, 
how do recruitment platforms come and technology comes into picture in terms of uh, um, high impact on demand hiring and um, uh, how, how does it all come together sanjeev for you i would compare it to a qsr or a quick service restaurant right you mm -hmm. just place the order or or a drive through right or a drive in right because yeah. that's that's what it takes right you have to have pre-readied or you know maybe uh, something which is pre-cooked available mm -hmm. fresh although uh, i mean mm -hmm. without destroying the quality of the food mm -hmm. that's something that's going to you know answer this it's not easy there are baby steps that we have seen some organizations mm -hmm. have taken mm -hmm. there is a marketplace that is uh, you know coming yeah. up with platforms like this uh, so i think uh, it, it is more about understanding the need or the uh, you know the talent that is required preempting that uh, right from early careers to to a qsr uh, you know comparable uh, yeah. you know platform which can provide you uh, ready made material and it goes with one of my own personal uh, facts wherein you know somebody would come in or a, or a leader would come in a operations leader would come in and say hey sanjeev i need your help i know i'm just giving you 3 weeks of time but i need say 50 people to be onboarded in 3 weeks and I and I would you know in a lighter way and say yeah 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 don't worry I have my cupboard keys with me just go and pick up as many people from my cupboard, right? So that's that's something which needs to come true very soon. Yeah yeah, couldn't agree more, Sanjeev. Of course, Tagged too uh, ventured uh, some time back into the space and is doing some yeah. amazing work to exactly what sure. you described. Can we can we can we uh, can we take um, so for example the data sufficiency of a profile that usually comes. Uh, externally is at 10 percent can we take it to about 70 percent and save that much retain the quality and then uh, have saved business the time and uh, have got, had a great candidate experience to so all of that together of course uh, of course yeah. yeah coming to you shafali uh, one question that the audience has what initiatives and practices can organizations adopt to ensure a fair and unbiased recruitment process that promotes diversity, inclusion, and equal opportunity. Shefali, nobody better than you with an organization as diverse in its business uh, spectrum as uh, uh, GCL. Over to you, Shefali. Yeah, uh, thanks for the question, Devashish. I think it totally resonates with what we are dealing with right now. I think uh, for us, making sure that the process is extremely fair, it's transparent, um, which also, which also means here that we're not just opening up positions externally, we also open them up internally. So there is talent which is with us internally which you want to move forward with. Uh, we make sure that when we are hiring people, we are honest about what we need. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no jibber-jabber of um, we'll give you the moon and the stars. We make sure we tell them exactly what we need. Uh, while we are hiring people, uh, we don't try to get into you know, a lot of networking there, you know, mm -hmm. someone sent me a CV and, you know, I need to get that in. No, it's it's completely a very transparent process. We get into a cross-functional team. We like to take opinions from other functions as well when we are hiring key positions. Mm -hmm. uh, because after all, you're working as a family, you're working as a, uh, it's, it's not, as I mentioned, it's not a homogeneous group. So you need perspectives, you need a cultural fitment into the company. Uh, we have a very strong referencing mechanism in place, um, both um, uh, formal and informal. We try to make sure we're getting those people who will fit into our culture. Uh, compliances and integrity for us is very, very important. You know, these yeah. are the company. We want to make sure that's always there. So, uh, therefore, our push towards uh, making sure that uh, this uh, referencing is extremely, extremely taken, well taken care of. So overall, um, we don't go with, uh, you know, I only want to hire a diversity candidate. And mm -hmm. diversity for us is not just gender diversity. Yeah. It's a whole lot, right? So we don't want to limit ourselves to it. And um, I think so far it's working for us. We're trying to build that part. We're trying to make our processes simpler. And we're pursuing uh, excellence there. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Shafali. Great, great insights there. Um, I'll, I'll take up the next question uh, and uh, um, I'll pose it to Salesh. Salesh, uh, as an employer, how important is the concept of employer branding in attracting top talent? And this is the caveat, differentiating from your competition and how does HPE do that? Yeah. 
No, I think this is this is an amazing question. Um, yeah. Because employer branding, in my view, um, really defines who you are and what you stand for. Uh, every organization has a different brand. Yeah. Um, and that brand has to appeal to teams out there who you're trying to attract. And let me also add a caveat here. Employee branding is not just important for talent as external to you. Mm-hmm. It's equally important to your own talent. Yeah. They have to stay with you in the organization. They have to feel proud about what you stand for. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And it's all about building pride in that organization. And a lot of it is also around how do you actually communicate the values and culture of the organization externally? And I think we've been able to do a phenomenal job of this in firstly communicating our strategy in terms of communicating our purpose, communicating our value. What does HP mean to each one of us internally and to each and every um, candidate outside there who like to look at the packet enterprise as as their next career move so to me branding is not just about a one size fits all approach it's about creating a brand yourself your core brand remains the same your core values your core culture remains the same but it's about how do you create an appeal uh, that differentiates across the different demographic groups that you're trying and i think that is what helps us differentiate ourselves from our competitors and that's what attracts some of the talent out there. No, no, completely. I think uh, if you are able to, um, I don't know if showcase is the right word, but uh, amplify the actual culture of the organization and show how uh, attractive is that. Because at the end of the day, you're spending uh, 60% of your life at least working uh, and exactly. uh, you're spending more time at work than with the family too at times. So I uh, absolutely resonate with that, Sanish. Uh, my next question, uh, Sanjeev, is to you. Um, the question that the audience has, how can we leverage professional networks and in industry communities to connect with potential candidates? And here's the caveat, passive candidates who may not be actively looking for job opportunities. And all four of us know they're the best ones. <laughs> <laughs> So there, there have been events. So, for example, we recently sponsored a hackathon event, mm-hmm. right? And that actually helped, uh, you know, us reach out to candidates who were passionate about, say, coding, right? And were not necessarily looking for an opportunity or a career opportunity, right? But we also wanted to tell them what we do, what are things that we are doing, what kind of uh, research and development that entity data does at a global level. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't do that kind of, uh, you know, engagement when a candidate applies or you reach out to a candidate. So we we do such events. We are uh, pretty much, a, you know, a common feature on some of these NASCOM events that happen or CI events that happen because we want to showcase what we do as an organization. It's not just servicing our clients, but also what is the R&D that we are doing. Say, for example, we are now entity as a global brand or the Japanese uh, HQ, as we call it, uh, right? We are already working working on the sixth generation, right? So who brought 3G, who brought 4G, who brought 5G? We all know that, right? So who's working on the 6G now, right? So it's entity. So we are already, we are miles ahead, right? So we we go to dedicated, focused groups. Uh, We reach out to them, tell them what we do globally, not just the jobs that we have here. Uh, We're looking for passionate uh, people. and, And we tell them, hey, this is what it is. So that uh, you know, helps us in building communities. It helps us in reaching out to people and tell them more about entity data and entity as a brand and our Amazing. values. And Amazing. I know that uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise does it amazingly well. Your Gr- Green Lake uh, uh, program completely uh, does exactly that. So fantastic. The last question, and we have just about two minutes with that, Selesh, for you. Uh, the average lifespan of employees is rapidly reducing among young profession. By lifespan, I think it's the work life span, what they mean, especially IT engineers. What are some initiatives that HPE is taking to enhance commitment among young engineers to stay within the organization for a longer period of time? So I just spent 30 seconds on a topic that I can spend 30 minutes, but um, I'll, I'll be very, very quick. Um, so what we do is that uh, we have 
you know, uh, I've coined a term called the uh, head, the heart, and the wallet. And if you've heard me speaking at at certain uh, forums, you've heard me speaking about this. It's about it how head, you... head, heart, and wallet. In the wallet. Wow. And it's when you bring the three together, can you actually uh. look at gaining talent? So wallet's all about how well do you. It's about market competitive, um, you know, salaries. It's about long term incentives. Hold them there. Uh, the heads about the career development, mentoring, networking. It's about uh, skill training. It's about career growth, and the heart is the most important of all. It's the culture. It's about how do you make them feel. And um, as I said, I can spend 30 minutes, but I've got 30 seconds, so I'll stop here. But uh, <laughs> something that um, that really drives a lot of our retention for us, and our retention is probably 50%. I'm sorry, our attrition is probably 50% of the market today. Yes. So, uh, or the industry level. So, I think it's worked well for us over the years. Thank you, Sailesh, Shifali, Sanjeev. Uh, absolutely a pleasure. Uh, I, I, I've been rekindled again just speaking with the three of you. And uh, it was a, another great learning experience. I look forward to many more such conversations, one on one in forums, again at People Matters. Thank you so much. Uh, Ramya, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for sharing such wonderful insights, especially Shifali, Sanjeev, and Shailesh, that I think will equip every attendee to address the gaping gaps and inconsistencies within their organization and to Devashish for navigating the conversation. Those were some really good takeaways for our audience here. As we come to the end of the session, we would like to extend our gratitude to our partner, TAGD, for helping us curate this discussion. And a big thank you to our audience for giving us such thought-provoking questions. It has been a pleasure hosting you all, and we hope most of your questions were answered. Do stay in touch for details on our upcoming virtual learning sessions with TAG. Have a great day ahead, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ramya. People Matters. Thank you, Shafali, Selesh, Sanjeev. Uh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Everyone. Bye-bye.